And welcome back to the Crochet Crowd Live here tonight. Um, I don't usually go live in the evenings because I'm tired, but um, I have a bit of a creative streak. I am creating um, hats for Daniel and I. So we have a crochet kind of event happening uh, in Europe with crocheters. And so anyway, we're doing an elf um, hat competition. So I am making our elf hats. So anyway, I'm starting with mine first. So I wear green sunglasses. So these elf hats can be worn out in public. Um, so anyway, I'm kind of, I did the brims over the weekend. What's the Thursday? Yeah, I did the brims over the weekend and um, I'm just now starting the body. I have some ideas. So you can let me know where you're from today and uh, I can see what you're saying to me. And uh, Nicole and Riley and Rach is here t this evening. And so have you been with us a long time? Um, you can share with us in the more comments if you want to. So, uh, so Stephanie, you're in the house today and um, it's a good morning in Melbourne, Australia. I always find the time zones are really quite interesting. So anyway, so I have this idea in my head. So I'm gonna cable work. I'm gonna do two different hats. Um, I asked Daniel over the weekend, I said, can I just design these hats um, and not share the pattern, like just uh, free flow and create? And he says, no, you're going to have to write out the damn pattern. And I'm like, oh, God sakes. So anyway, so um, that's kind of where I am. And uh, he says, you know, people are going to bug you for the pattern. And I'm like, yeah, but why can't I just say that it doesn't exist? And he goes, well, does that even work? And I'm like, no. So anyway, so I am writing the pattern on the other screen as I'm talking to you. So I'm just recording my notes. And so I'm using just kind of scrap yarn for some of it. Um, I'm using Karen Colorama Halo uh, for this one here for this hat. It's going to start off as gold and then it will transition to a light magenta. And so anyway, I don't know if I'm gonna use other colors or just let it naturally trend on itself, but I am kind of looking for that elf hat, kind of like the point. So I ordered six inch um, pom-poms on Amazon. So some big ass pom-poms, you know, the ones that will just try to make your head tilt. So um, that's kind of what I'm thinking about doing that. So anyway, so I like this Karen color, Rama Halo. And because it will be Christmas time, we're doing Christmas on the market or Christmas on the Rhine River in uh, Europe. So it is Christmas time when we're there. So for us to wear elf hats throughout the Christmas markets actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah, so anyway, so that's kind of what I'm up to tonight. So, okay, so um, so we got lots of people checking in from where they are in the world. It's amazing. Uh, we did many years ago, kind of like a, a shout out to see where people in the world were from. And I think we almost had every country except for Antarctic uh check in so it's amazing how fast our community is and uh so it's kind of fun so somebody uh says that my hat kind of looks like cat in the hat i was kind of i'm going for the concept of um the toy box the elf in the toy box so i'm trying to use colors that may not really go well together just kind of really be fun with it and uh, et cetera. So the brims are using um, Red Heart Heat Wave. And so the yarn is discontinued, which I still had in my collection. I actually really like the yarn, but it actually heats up in daylight. So UV makes the yarn activate and gets 12 degrees warmer. So for me uh, going in Europe at Christmas time outside in the Christmas markets, um, the daylight will just heat up my hat. So at least the brim. So um, that's kind of my my thought process with that. So what I want to do with this particular part that I'm working on now is that I'm going to cause it to bowl out. And so I'm doing like the concept of the stitch stop and roll. Do you remember that? Um, there's a tutorial available for that. So anyway, that's kind of what I'm thinking. And so Ron is joining us for the first time. Somebody's in Middleton. Middleton I think that's close to me. Um, I still don't know my geography of uh, Nova Scotia very well. Um, I think all eyes are on the new storm that's brewing out in the Atlantic. Is it Lee? I think it's Lee. Okay, so we got St. Louis, Louis, uh, St. Louis. I don't think I'm saying that right. St. Louis. Meet me in St. Louis or, or St. I don't even know. It's the damn accent, right? So anyway, I am um, third and fourth. 
rounds. Yep, so anyway, so the dogs are outside barking away. Um, so anyway, just a general a note out to all of you. You know those little shorts that I do, the kind of like the quirky kind of things? Um, YouTube put a rule down um, that they no longer allow links on those things. So even though I can showcase um, a, a pattern or something, I'm no longer allowed to put a link in the video description or the comments. And uh, anyway, so I just don't think people realize that that's not something that I can control. I wish that I could, but I think it was abused by people. You know how you get those damn influencers that like, honestly, you got a light or you got this or you got that. And then they affiliate link everything. And I think anyway, it was being abused. That's my guess. I don't know. But I don't usually do that. So well, I'd never do that really. Um, it's not my thing. So anyway, um, what else do we have going on here? So, yeah. So thank you for joining us this fall. Why can't we have nice things? Leanne, you're speaking sense. And, you know, my friend Kelly Ray, here's Kelly. Um, actually, if you saw the cat coach, uh, Kelly Ray here is my friend that's local. Um, I always sit beside her in club and I serve her candy. Yeah, she's my, she's my candy girl. So um, I always buy Swedish berries at Michael's when I'm there and a, and a, bottle of coke and anyway so i sit and i she lends me her scissors and then i feed her candy so it's a it's a great relationship we have a lot of fun and she's really quick-witted and she's funny and she's just bad she's a bad girl she needs a good spanking so anyway and chance there she'd probably take one too yeah so kelly is my scissors friend yeah she threatens to cut off my nuts anyway i don't think i think she would stop at least midway but I'm not 100% sure. So we don't trust her with with not wearing underwear around her. <laughs> so anyway, so it's uh, it's always a pleasure. I actually, would, when I go to group, we call it group here at home because it's kind of like our therapy session. When we go to group, um, we always kind of make a joke that it's group. Like it's like it's a therapy session and it really kind of is in the end of the day. So I'm going to do the fifth round. So it's kind of a nice opportunity. Um, so, you know, th those, you have opportunities to do that locally at, in your local Michaels. Um, they do allow um, you to use the room. Um, I think the only rule is if you're going to teach something, you've got to use something that the store provides. Uh, we don't teach anything. We just meet there for, meet there. And um, I have to sign a contract for it uh, to make sure that we return the room back to um, regular conditions after we're done. And uh, anyway, it's been a good time. We've been doing that for years. Yeah. Okay, so I had to move uh, for work many times and my stitching group becomes my close community. So how many people here belong to a stitching group and how many people really want a stitching group? And if you really want a stitching group, you should say where you're from because maybe other people want a stitching group. And I honestly know, like I like Kelly and everything. She's my friend, but I don't want people in my house. So, you know, finding that right spot where um, you can meet without having to violate your uh, privacy, I think is the key element. Um, I tried to do it back in Ontario, and unfortunately, um, even the church was wanting rent if you were to go to rent the space. So anyway, I could never get it established back where I lived. Um, I couldn't find a space that would allow us to use a place for free. And uh, I really didn't want people in my home. But, you know, the church has their expenses, so I understand it just kind of sucked. Um, so, yeah, so Ruth is commenting about them being discontinued um, with COVID. Ours was as, far, as well as, uh, as, as with that as well. But, you know, you come at your own risk. And really, honestly, I think people stay home if they're not feeling well. I think Kelly was not feeling well a few weeks ago, so she was, like, missing an action. And then she went on a holiday or something. I, that was last year. She went to Quebec. So she left me behind, but she left me behind in a hurricane. Way to go. Nice friend she is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm a huge introvert. Yeah, we have people that come to the group that don't even talk, but they just want to be around other creative people. And then there's other people that, honestly, they talk a lot. <laughs> so... 
I just always try to remember that a conversation is a two-way street, even though I'm yapping at you now, there's nobody actually talking to me other than you type typing. Um, but, you know, conversation is a two-way street, and I think sometimes people forget that. Just saying. Okay, let me just bang in some instructions here. Sixth round, chain one. Crochet through the stitch and back loop and back loop of the second round at the same time. Anyway, the dogs are getting in trouble. There's actually, um, I can hear a helicopter or something. So uh, how do you teach the, uh, Mikey, do you teach how to do Tunisian? Yes, it's on our channel. If you're looking for that, just look up Tunisian. Um, I don't get to, I don't enjoy it that much, um, to be honest with you. Um, but it is a skill. We do have videos of it. There's some things that I really do enjoy. Um, I know don't kill the messenger, but I've been getting into knitting lately. I know. So anyway, I've been actually, I learned how to do cables, um, last week and I am like, wow. Oh, actually I have one of my hats here. Um, so the membership has access to this video already, but, um, yeah. So anyway, I learned how to do cables and it's wonderful. Anyway, I almost thought with my elf hat to knit it, but then it's a crochet event. So for me to show up with a, a knit hat instead of crochet might be a little, what's that, sacrilegious. Mm -hmm. Anyway, not that we're all judging, but we probably are. Yeah. Um, so uh, Joe finds Tunisian boring. I don't know if I find it boring. It just doesn't capture my interest. Maybe I haven't found the um, uh, the right um, project, right? So, well, 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 time flies. Uh, time flies. So she's putting on flies, says Francesca. Oh, my God. So, Francesca, I've got to tell you a quick story. So, anyway, I worked in a call center and uh, uh, for Courier. And my one colleague wasn't very intelligent. And so, anyway, he was lucky he uh, even had teeth in his head, which half of them were missing. But anyway, so he wasn't the star smartest thing. And my God, this guy was so dramatic. He almost thought he was a homosexual. Anyway, so dramatic. So anyway, so this woman by the name of Francesca calls and we have to take the name of the, of the person placed in the order for the courier. And anyway, he gets off the phone and he says, Francesca says, and anyway, all of us in the courier, in the courier center just started howling. And I said, it's, I said, Francesca, because we knew who he was talking about because she was a regular. And uh, he goes, who's Francesca? <laughs> and anyway, and anyway, one of the call takers, uh, she said, do you mean Francesca? And he goes, oh, is that how you say it? And anyway, I don't even know what happened to him, but we never got over it. Never got over it. Anyway, so it's kind of funny. Anyway, so that's my Francesca story. So anyway, I worked in a call center. Honestly, I hate I hate answering the phone to this day because of it. And especially when Christmas time comes. Oh my God, people are just so, um, just so sorry. Uh, somebody says, sorry, they, uh, I missed this. Well, we're still alive. Um, anyway, so I hate answering the phone and being on the phone because of that, that, um, time of my life and then christmas comes and then people start wanting to courier shit the day before christmas and then we run out of drivers and time and stuff and then these people start yelling at you on the phone you know how the christmas spirit goes and anyway they're just freaking howling and whining at you why don't you have any drivers i'm like because you and a million other people also forgot to place your orders like and ship stuff like weeks earlier and anyway just a nightmare 
So anyway, by the time Christmas came, I would honestly, I didn't even want to celebrate Christmas. It was just so nasty. Yeah. So anyway, that's kind of thing. So Chris, Christina is with us. Christina C. Uh, so a Francesca took you a while. A Francesca, it's a beautiful name. Yeah. So when I met Daniel, uh, my middle name, um, I, he, he says, uh, I, he says, what's your middle name? And I said, I really don't want to tell you because I just met him. And I said, it's the worst name ever. And, uh, and I said, do you want to guess what it is? And he goes, there's no worse name than Edward. And I, and he goes, what's your middle name? And I said, Edward. And I said, are you effing kidding me? <laughs> so anyway, so I could have been an Edward, but I'm not. So anyway, that's kind of one of those things where you put your foot in your mouth. Uh, Daniel's known for doing that. Um, we met another gay couple and uh, they asked Daniel if he likes dancing and Daniel hates dancing, right? So Daniel, Daniel is a professional musician. So anyway, so, and Daniel says, I hate dancing, especially line dancing. So Daniel says, well, what do you do for a living? And the guy apparently teaches line dancing for a living. Oh my God. Um, that friendship did not go any further. So crochet, Diane has got to go. So there you go. Okay. So we got Brienne and the house people are starting to join us. And anyway, so, uh, you know, It, and it's like when you put your foot in your mouth when you say ask somebody when they're when they're due when they're actually not pregnant at all. I've done that a few times. I know better not to say a damn word unless they offer that. So how do you hate? He hates dancing because he's a professional musician for orchestras. So he doesn't hear music in the sense of um, um, rhythm or the sense of um, feeling. He hears it from a technical point of view of the beats and stuff. Um, so he doesn't hear music from an emotional driving point of view that causes dancing. So anyway, so if he is dancing on the floor and you catch him, a uh, chance there he's had a couple drinks. So yeah. So anyway, so, but I love to dance. So that's my favorite thing about the live events that we do. Sometimes we do dances and I just love it. But anyway, so I want Daniel to dance with me, but he doesn't want to. So I'm like, so I'm dancing all by myself with the girls. Just, I guess, just fine with me, but still. I can't dance, but I try. Melissa, thank you so much for at least trying. So who's going to dance? A wood pigeon. Oh, Jay. Now I know your name now. So Jay. Jay was just, I just featured Jay on our um, stitch, our, on the crochet crowd. And uh, anyway, so you got a great smile, Jay. So thank you for encouraging us. So Jay was the guy at Michael's there. What's your favorite music to dance? So I like music I can sing along to. Well, I can't sing worth the damn, but I can at least howl like a dog too. Um, my favorites, one of my favorite songs of all times is uh, the video killed the radio star. Video killed the radio star. And then of course, girls want to have fun with, with that. And uh, anyway, so that's the kind of music that I really thoroughly enjoy. So Midwest Katie is just joining us. So thank you for sharing the store on your group. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it's, um, we haven't actually done profiles on, on people in a while. So I thought it was time and it was a great photo to share. Um, I don't miss the crochet crowd stitch social Facebook group because that was just nasty. Um, but um I'm really, really heavily focused on YouTube these days and making sure that we have enough education out there that's available for everybody. And the stuff that's in the membership only, eventually most of it will go to the general public at some point. It's just, I work this far in advance. So, so 
So I kind of had some sad news delivered yesterday. Um, somebody that I work closely with at Your Inspirations has decided to move on. And so anyway, so there was a meeting called and it was with like the upper echelon of people. And I'm like, okay, this is rare. It only, I only get the upper echelon when it's um, time to talk about things that you don't really want to talk about. I'm like, oh shit. So I thought I was kind of in trouble. So anyway, so I come on and the one contact, I don't talk to her that often, but she's like in the upper echelon and she decided to quit. And so she wanted to let me know she was moving on with the rest of the team that was on the Zoom call. And I was like, almost wanted to cry on the phone or on the Zoom. I was just so taken back by it. Ugh, like, you know, there's certain people that come into your life that make a huge impact. And she's one of them for me. And as the, so for her moving on was really quite um, emotional for me. So, so I was kind of really um, kind of a mess yesterday during that. So I just got to make sure I got the right stitch count. So just one second. So So anyway, when I count, I'm uh, there goes Kelly. See, that's why she can't come into there. So, um, so Jane is here joining us today. So when I count, it reminds me a lot of my mom. My mom, when she counted, um, she would go like one, two, three, four, and then breathe in four, five, six, and then seven, eight, nine, ten, and then uh, thirteen. So she would breathe backwards for her numbers. So whenever I count, I think of my mom counting. I don't know why. It's just one of those things. So now I got kind of like a, a thing going on. Okay, so I'm gonna go into seventh round, seventh round, um, and I wanna do chain one, half, one half double crochet. Actually, you know what? I should do this twice. Yeah, I'm gonna do that twice. Let me just paste and copy. Okay, so I'm back. Okay, what am I making? So I'm making um, I'm making elf hats. We have a comp competition going on in the on the, our event in Europe, Christmas on the Rhine River. Um, thinking I need a stitch marker. So, uh, I've been struggling with concentration. Thinking I need a stitch marker. Um, so Melissa misses her um, um, there. So Jay. Um, Jay, you, uh, Jay, there's going to be um, a tutorial coming out. It's currently sitting in membership, um, but it's actually, I just posted, if you can read instructions, I just posted it on our, our website yesterday. These are um, slip stitch brims. They take me about three to four hours to make a brim. And I know it's a long time. And I know a typical man thing, you just want to get it over with. Um, but anyway, um, they're my favorite brims of all time and they're done with slip stitching so um, they're really quite tight um, and they keep their elasticity forever so it's not like going on the back well it is a back loop but because you use slip stitching instead um, it ends up for a really tight do you like tight i bet you like tight um, it looks um it's really tight so it, it holds it so it's not like when i first did my first crochet hat I think in 2000 and when I started this whole thing. Anyway, this hat, when I stretched it for the first time, it was so, I couldn't figure out how to get it back to the right shape. 
I didn't realize that crochet, once it stretches, it's screwed. So, um, oh shit, you know what I should do? <gasps> That'd be cute. No, 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 don't complicate the system. If I wasn't writing this pattern, I'd probably do it. Okay, so, um, yeah. So how many stitches wide is the rim? Um, it's a total of 15 um, slip stitches. So chain 16 and then do 15 um, slip stitches across. And it, it does take a while. And the brims are, oh, the brims are 2.75 uh, um, inches. But what you can do with it, if you don't like it that thick, you can fold the brim in half and then attach there. So you could have um, half brims. You could have a, a brim that looks like this and just attach the two together. And then you would have a, a thick brim with the fold if you really wanted that. Um, this is Salty. Salty, Salty, you gonna come and say hi? Come here, come here. You gonna come here? Come here. Yay! He's got a bone today. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yay! Are you my favorite? Yeah, you are. Yeah. Is that your bone? Okay. He's got a bone. He gets a little protective when there's a bone. Yeah, puppy dog is still upstairs. Um, if you don't, uh, if you do it tight, it just falls out of shape. Yeah. Um, so we have uh, somebody from Australia. Julie's from Australia with the humor. Likes the humor. Um, yeah, Salty's a good boy. So he's got his bones, so he gets a little thing. Slip trim does take a while, but it's fine. But it's fun. I wouldn't say it's fun. I just think it's worth it. Sherry, don't be making up stories. You're as bad as my friend. Oh, and um, Kelly, if you talk about my two kitties, you're going to get them. So Kelly won't take my cats off my hands. Um, I don't know about you, but I don't like sleeping with my cats. And unfortunately, the dogs sleep with Daniel in his bed. And, and I moved to my own bedroom in um february because we have two great pyrenees and they they both sleep on the bed anyway there was no room left two adults and two grown great pyrenees dogs just do not match and we had a king size bed so anyway i'm stuck with the cats and i wake up and they lick my fingers like with wet fingers i do not like cats licking at me at night time and then of course we i have my own bed which is a double and yet they want to sleep on my stomach or if I'm on my side, they have to sleep on my gut. I'm like, there's all this bed. Why do you do that? So anyway, so. So Sherry says she do th she thinks it's fun. So um, so we have five indoor cats, no more. So um, the one goes out all the time. Uh, Binky Booth doesn't go out anymore, but um, Puss Puss does. So she goes away for like a week. So she packs like a lunch. She may have another family somewhere else. I don't know. But she goes away for a week and then just magically shows up. So uh, we got to the point where we don't even write our obituary anymore because we know she's coming back at some point. Yep. So they do that because they're claiming me as yours. I really don't like a cat licking my fingers when I'm trying to sleep. I think it's not very pleasant. So anyway, so so anyway, I've been trying to coax my friend Kelly Ray there to take my cats, and she just won't take them. So I think she's kind of being mean to me, and we're friends and everything. Um, so um, Christy kind of likes the humor. You know what? I don't. It's not necessarily a mean thing to throw people under the bus, but sometimes people need to be thrown under the bus. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I think there's almost. I don't know this for a fact, but I'm thinking that some uh, lady messaged the other day and she goes, I dare you to do a short on. So I think now people are giving me ideas to throw people under the bus. 
So they aren't, are intentionally saying something so that I throw them under the bus. So it might actually be a badge of honor <laughs> if I mention them and put them under the bus. So anyway, but you know, there is some kind of like the gay humor can really lend itself to that. Um, there's actually a really good series on um, Netflix about swear words and stuff. So I try not dropping the language intentionally. Um, I say the F word, like nobody's business. Um, but, uh, but anyway, so I do use that language quite a bit. And so to leave it off the short seems kind of unnatural. But yeah, so anyway. So I am making an elf hat for those that are joining me late today. So Jeanette is here in Nova Scotia. So anyway, so the series is all about, you know, like the gay, a gay man can get away with saying certain language that a straight man can't get away with. And so um, my humor generally is very dry and very sarcastic and really quite rude. And uh, so uh, Joe says, wait, Mikey, are you, are you gay? No, I'm just gaily forward. Actually, no, I'm not gay. Daniel is. I just happen to live with him. <laughs> How's that? Yeah, so anyway, so that's kind of fun. I have had people show up at one of my events, though. They don't realize that Daniel and I are partners, so they think we're business partners, and then they're floored when they realize we're the actual real partner. So Daniel and I have been together 15 years, if you can imagine. And so in gay terms, that's like 70. So it's like, kind of feels like 70 some days, I'll tell you. Yeah, so anyway. So I'm trying to think where I get that from. I don't know where I get that from. I think that's my version. When I say, when I do that, that's my version of those reality shows where they show somebody being really sarcastic and then they suck a dry straw. <laughs> like they hold their straw. <laughs> that's my, that's my. Awkward. Yeah. So Francesca says that she has a worse note. So my last partner, get this, was a, a former Jehovah Witness. So he never lied, he never swore at all. So when I first met him, I was swearing. He would like go up and down about how I'm not supposed to be swearing. So anyway, so for those five years. <laughs> Daddy's working. So rude. Go suck your bone. Where's your bone? <gasps> Is that your bone? But go chew your bone. Show daddy how you chew your bone. Oh, puppy dog's coming. I can hear her breathing. Anyway. Dogs. Anyway. So rude. Um, what was I going to say? So anyway, so when I met Daniel, Daniel was a constant swear. And I'm like, oh, my God, I can swear again. And so then I let it go. And if you don't like it tough, but I have to say that when I'm on those Zoom meetings um, and they say something to me, I'm like my first word of my worth is like, oh, fuck. <laughs> and, and I don't hold back because I don't even think about it. And anyway, so, but they're used to it. They don't swear it with me, but I swear for sure. I was a little bit taken back though. I was at Michael's yesterday and this woman is swearing at her kid and the kid i think was almost seven years old and she goes you better effing appreciate this i do a lot for you you little mm. and it, she goes you know what hold the receipts because i just spent 30 dollars on you and i was like behind her in line and i'm like holy shit my mom or my parents would have never talked to me that way and i'm thinking hmm, when that kid gets into a teenage years when that kid starts swearing at you i'm like you did it to yourself. Mm -hmm. Oh, let me do that. Anyway, I was just floored. So anyway, so she left and I said to the cashier, I said, can you believe that? She goes, no. She goes, I really can't. And so 
it was a teenager girl that was serving at the Mike Holson. I thought, oh, I said, that's just surprised me a lot. So anyway, yeah. So somebody's having an anniversary. Michelle Price is having an anniversary today. Okay. Um, but yeah. So anyway, my events are always at all only because I do swear. Um, and it do, it's so natural for me. So don't put your kids in any of my events. So I don't market my events for kids because they'll be quite surprised. And anyway, so I did have this teenager girl and, and mom had been with me twice before. So she knew my humor. So she said her, her teenager girl can handle it. So anyway, so <laughs> we had this running joke throughout the cruise. Sweetie, you need to go to the pool. Said so mommy and daddy have out all the time. <laughs> so anyway, so I would see the girl. So the girl would be hanging out with us. The parents would be God knows where. And I said, oh, are you supposed to be by the pool, sweetie? And she goes, Michael, I know what that means. <laughs> she goes, I ain't got a child. She goes, I don't even want to think about it. So anyway, so yeah. So there's the little short for you there. Um, you were uh, coming to the island next month for a fiber festival. Yes, I am. I'm doing uh, four workshops. At in Prince Edward Island, and then I'm doing a book signing event there. I just got word of that this morning. You bring your book, I'll sign it. I'm not selling anything at the show. Um, I'm just going in as a as a guest host teacher. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm I'm excited about that. So we were supposed to do it last year, but last year we had Hurricane. Florence come through here and anyway it flooded um it flooded uh Prince Edward Island pretty seriously anyway so I decided to I wasn't going in as a host teacher last year so I just canceled my my room and everything and anyway the just show decided to cancel I think three days before it went anyway so there was really some upset people over because they had airline tickets and everything and I'm like you people are crazy oh was it Fiona it was Fiona. Yeah, it was Fiona. Um, so anyway, so I'm like, you people are nuts. So I thought about going anyway, because I knew there was a hurricane coming. And um, and I decided, you know what, my car is going to be a parking lot and a tree is probably going to hit it. And I said, no, I'm not going to go. So the people have not received their stuff yet, Michelle. They'll get it. Uh, they'll get a surprise at their, in their uh, different steps when they get that. Okay, so two rounds of single crochet. Uh, so the Fiber Festival is downtown um, Prince Edward Island. So Prince Edward Island is about a three to four hour drive from my home. So it's a it's a beautiful um, spot. Definitely, it, it's a bucket list for many people that travel. And uh, anyway, it's worth it's worth the visit. So I haven't been to PI in a few years, and I'm going by myself because Daniel is going to look after the dogs. And then I had that event in Lake Tahoe. Um, with Jimmy Beans. There could be some tickets left over for that. I'm not really sure. Um, anyway, it's a it's a three day, three and a half day retreat in Lake Tahoe. And uh, anyway, we have that full catering, we have guest teachers. So it's a crochet crowd event. So I'm doing that in the US. So uh, Wood Pigeon was her was the honeymoon spot. Says J. So Wood Pigeon is J. Uh, Florence was a few years ago, really hit my cousins. So Florence wasn't Florence. Uh, Florence was a few years ago. Yes, it was. So now that the news is blocked here for Canadians, um, I assume that that last hurricane, I haven't seen any, that last hurricane that went through Florida, it looks like it didn't do any damage. I never saw any updates with that. So I think it just hit, hit Florida and died or something. So, which is good. So I haven't, 
seen any news with that so it kind of sucks because i'm kind of out of the the loop for what's happening in the news but i think it's mentally it's probably better for me not to know things going on either but i'm medicated now so i think i can handle some more stuff than i could before so it, it flooded southern florida so it, so it did actually create damage so the news is blocked, yes. So the search engines um, are blocked. Uh, social media platforms that include Facebook block the news. So you can no longer share anything about news. If it's, uh, for example, say there's uh, an article with a, new, with a, a TV station or, um, or newspaper, they, you can no longer share it, you're blocked. From being able to do it so unless your friend talks about it without providing a link um then you don't know what's happening so for example there, i was there was a fire here lately so i looked up fire in my area and nothing came out all the tourist information came up but there was no news in the search for anything so you have to literally go on to a news organization website in order to find stuff but then you have to get one that you trust and so anyway that's kind of so i don't know it is what it is so i understand why it's happened the blockage of the news but it kind of makes you isolated of not knowing what's going on in the world So yeah, so that's kind of what we want to go there. So um, I wanted to go to Lake, I live an hour and a half away, but I have a newborn. Oh, darn. Um, the smoke is gagging us in Nebraska. I guess the smoke is gagging you in Nebraska. I assume that you're talking about a forest fire. Again, I don't even know. Yeah. So what they wanted, what the Canadians are losing their new, uh, the newspapers and the news organizations are collapsing one after another. So the Canadian government decided that um, social media, for example, they use the news as a way to gain revenue and clicks. And what happens is, is that they pull information from the news websites and post it without actually giving credit. And so the Canadian government just wanted um, the Google and Facebook to at least compensate for that because they get monetization. And so both Google and Facebook said no. And so they blocked the news. But there's an extreme amount of millions of dollars that are generated through ad revenue based on pulling news information. And so Canadians, um, the government decided they were they were tired of the news organizations and newspapers folding and collapsing of the the sector of the business. So they wanted them to be compensated for their work, and the social media platforms said no. And with that, they said no. So anyway, so what what are you going to do, right? You're just a person in the whole puzzle of the game. So there's not much you can do. So the downfall of that is that I have no idea what's going on in the world. No idea. Um, so the only way you could bypass that is if you sign up for apps of news organizations to get notifications of stuff, but I haven't done that. And then Facebook, um, sorry, YouTube also did a change. So the Canadian government also went after um, um, organizations that are um, giving way too many advertising. Um, so what's happened is that even YouTube for Canadians, we don't see as much advertising. Uh, on the online space, we don't see as much advertising. So they said that the Canadians are being over inundated with advertising online. So what they've done is that, um, um, they are restricting how much advertising Canadians can see. 
And because of that, people that rely on monetization and ad revenue from the clicks um, don't do as well in Canada as a result of it. And they also made a rule that um, YouTube, for example, somebody like me, I will be referred to a lot um, because of um, because of the level that we are at and the size of the channel and the community. But they say for uh, the Canadian government said it's not fair for new people that want to start out because they don't have a fighting chance because of the algorithm. So the rule is, is that all Canadian creators have to have equal balance. So a new creator tomorrow can start a YouTube channel and they will have the equal amount of exposure to somebody like me instead of the regular big people like me always having the space for in the search engines. So they said it's a, it's a better balance and also encourages more people to get involved in business and to have a, an equal footing to everybody else. So that's changed um, as of, when did that go down? I think that went down in, in spring. And so anyway, so I think, honestly, I think it's kind of fair. Because if you're just starting out, you don't have a hope in the search engine to get equal space as somebody else. So, and then you really do rely on yourself to make sure that you get subscribers and stuff like that, right? Um, yeah, so anyway, so honestly, I haven't seen much of a difference. And I do support that. I think that, um, I think it's better if everybody does better instead of just a few people do better, if you know what I mean? Um, so I could be really pissed off about that, but I'm not. I think it's fair and everybody deserves a fighting chance to succeed in life and to be able to find a way to to make a living. And I think that's it just seems fair to me. So that's not something that I disagreed with at all. Okay, I'm just placing something in the pattern. Yeah, so Mrs. Lady Lopez, I think so too. That That's my attitude. We're all in this together. Everybody deserves to put food on the table. And so I think it's fair. Um, some people don't think it's fair, but whatever. So I just, but it makes you, so if you have equal opportunity, then that makes, it makes sure you put your best foot forward. Yeah. So I am, so my headband I'm wearing is actually a future hat. I'm just wearing it just for the sake of wearing it. So I'm making an elf hat. So I made some texture because I like my texture. Let's see how stupid this looks already. So the whole idea is not to, is to have fun with the hat. It's got a little bit of a, a lip. Just go with it. This is the part where you say, Good, Mikey. <laughs> um, so anyway, so yeah, encourage the fruit cake on camera. So yeah. So um, Slangiel says, it, I I believe in that too. If you encourage everybody to do well, then you know what. When I first started YouTube back in 2008, like there wasn't very many crochet posts at the time. And so I was trying to figure out what do people want? How do people want it? And uh, it makes you do better if you can see that. But the algorithm is always something that you fight against. So uh, how to make the rage blanket bigger? Yes, if you look at the rage blanket, if you look at the worsted version, that's much bigger. So you can do the worsted version also in Bernat Blanket if you want that one to be much bigger. Um, but I don't plan on designing it any more bigger than it is, though. I want to kind of move on from that. So um, I did see a kind of, it kind of, it was kind of a backhanded comment on Stitch Squad, but um, some person mentioned this, uh, tonight that they would they don't really like any of my study series. They said it's too colorful. They wish I would just use one color. So I'm almost thinking for the next stitch long study of that it's just going to be one color. And then they can't complain. And honestly, it's probably easier anyway. Because I suck at putting colors together. So the brim looks like a cupcake liner. 
Wow, sweetie, this cupcake is wearing this hat. <laughs> So the study of rage, yeah. So anyway, one lady says she doesn't want to do it because she said it's ugly name and she doesn't want that negativity in her house. And I'm like, oh, sweetie, it's just the name of a blanket. You can call it whatever you want. So I was just really pissed off when I designed it. Um, so right now I'm using Karen Colorama Halo in the color called uh, Magenta and Mandarin. So it's, it's going to transition in colors on its own. And so my goal is, is to make this to an alt hat that will dangle with a six inch pom pom on the end of the end or on the end of it. Yeah. So the study of rage video I did, did I do any fun stuff? I don't remember. I did that. I did put in the video the other day. Like if you rat me out with your inspirations, snitches get stitches. I'm trying to think what that was. I cheated something. Oh, I think it was the bag, the the Barbie bag. Okay. Okay, just gotta pay attention to the pattern for a second. There's six in a row. So I'm going to be doing this knitting uh, knit um, scarf in this Colorama Halo. Um, I was practicing yesterday at the stitch group. And uh, and so then Yarnspirations yesterday gave me a whole list of projects that I need to work on for videos. And they're all just like quick, easy repeating patterns, which is good. Um, which makes it easier for me, but um, so anyway, so I got lots of stuff to do coming up soon. Okay. Guess Salty is eating his bone. Salty is resting. But he's got his bone beside his leg, so you don't want to mess with him. Gets really territorial when it comes to the bones. You know how it is, men with their bones. Mm -hmm. Are the Ogos and, and the new color Rama the same? Um, I can't really tell. Yes, they are the same. They're just wrapped in a cake format. People didn't like the Ogo format, so they they the yarn sold well. Um, but they decided to discontinue the Ogo wrapping and just give it in a cake format so you can see the colors. And uh, it's too bad because uh, one woman was ranting the other day with me. And so she says, I wish the yarn companies would take it seriously about the yarn barf. And I'm like, they did. And they created Ogo and people didn't like it. And it caused them to change their tooling, which caused Red Heart Super Saver to go up by 50 cents and people had a bird. And I said, so it's not from a lack of trying. It's just from people just don't realize like when there's a cost change to give them what they want, they just ultimately don't want to pay the price to do it. And I'm like, you can't have it two ways. You just, if you're expecting a company to change something and it changes their equipment, then you got to pay for it. Right. Anyway, so anyway, so I knew the color. I knew the halo was coming back out a long time ago. But this stuff I can't talk about. So some yarn I know um, when it gets um, taken out of service, I know when it comes back. So and there's certain yarns. Um, Michael's, for example, controls the Karen cake line, so the colors and stuff. Um, and the choices are a Michael's decision. So, so some people like to ram yarn inspirations for discontinuing or taking a color or something out of service. So, um, really, that's the retailer that makes those those decisions. And it's based on sales. 
because if stuff does well, they don't take it in a service. And then some stuff is just seasonal where them to offer really heavy wool in the middle of spring and, and, and summer does not make sense um, because people just want to use lighter stuff. So the serve, it's always changing, right? So champagne on a beer budget. That's what I, that's my saying. Jay, have you heard me say that? Cause that's my saying. So the Brunac Blanc with the, with the sparkle, it is pretty. I think it came back out in the U S so my purple hook is a five millimeter hook. Yes. So for those Americans, it is a size of H slash eight. So champagne with the thing. It's a Canadian thing, but I heard um, you say that as well. Is that a Canadian thing? Champagne on a beer budget. I don't know where I picked that up. I, I heard that somewhere one day and it just really stuck. I actually broke my hook the other day too. One of these, I was really quite surprised by it, but I didn't break it on live camera when I was recording. But if I had it, you, know, you would have heard me like four, five, six. Anyway, I didn't think the, so it turns out these hooks, the shaft is only like that far in. I thought it would go further, but it's actually just right at the tip. Right at the tip, Kelly, right at the tip. So this one's truly just the tip. <laughs> So, we, so I don't think, yeah, champagne on a beer budget. I think I might have heard that on a reality show. I don't think it's a Canadian thing. Did you break your head during the study of rage? No, but I should have. Okay, so now I am, so I'm not sure how much I can stay with you live here because I'm actually now starting to follow a damn pattern and I'm just kind of glancing at it as I'm doing it. Okay, I don't think I can stay on camera with this pattern. So I'm going to head off. And um, I wish you the very best of the evening. I'm starting to do cable work and I have to pay attention to the down pattern. And I'm just going to give that a try and see what happens. So yeah, so uh, a member is Zoom. So we uh, no, but uh, Michelle, we have um, membership only chat once in a very blue moon here on YouTube, where it's the live video is only for thing. But for those, I need to schedule those so that you know that I'm around because there's not very many members. So I'd be sitting here by myself, I think, for some of it. So um, we'll have to schedule that. And we hope you have a great evening. It is now 9.16 in my time zone. So I'm going to head up and watch some TV with Daniel and grab my pattern and go. Have a good night. And we'll see you all. And thank you, Wendy. See you.